The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Between Tamirs on Orient Intelligence. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. Um, a lot to talk about this week. Obviously, we got some big stories. Obviously, um, found out both teams, um, Avondale Pontiac, both the new football coaches. We're going to talk also the impact of the Bay of Woods tr- departure from Oxford to Avondale. Um, and also, um, we got some breaking news also out of Oxford. We're going to br- we're going to talk all that today on this um, episode of the podcast. Um, let's go to our big story here. We're going to go football first, and I think this is going to be very interesting. Um, when you look at teams, obviously, looking for new coaches, new hires, um, Pontiac, you know, let's not forget, this is a program that's really had a ton of downs as of late. Um, when you're 5-91 and 91 since 2011, 0-18 the last two years, um, you know, when you look at the direction that that team's been going, I mean, last year Pontiac did go in the right direction, um, but unfortunately didn't win a game. Um, so they went, um, so Coach Ken Wade, Stepped down this offseason, um, and Pontiac ended up going with um, Wendell Jefferson, the new head coach, as a new head coach. Um, when you look at this hire, people are going to say, okay, um, you know, for Pontiac, they haven't been the same same program since Coach Brad Zuby was there. You know, and that's true. I mean, of course, Brad Zuby now the head coach at um, Ortonville Brandon. Of course, he did have a time at Stony Creek um, where he had a really nice couple of years with the Cougars. Um, but with Wendell Jefferson, um, you know, he coached the Pontiac Generals. It's a rival professional football team. Um, so when you really look at, you know, he knows the area quite well. Um, he was a 1984 graduate of Pontiac Central. Um, so when you look at Jefferson, he does bring some valuable experience to Pontiac. Um, definitely, you know, experience, you know, that this team needs. And obviously when you look at Pontiac football, um, they need, you know what I mean? I mean, obviously, you know, you look at what Pontiac's done. I mean, like obviously upgrades, the new stadium, um, you know, so there's a lot to be excited for, for Pontiac, you know, it's just, you know, putting the product on the field, um, program strength. We know has been a big time issue for Pontiac. We know that it's been like a major issue over there at Pontiac, and obviously you bring in a, um, you know, so that's always been, you have the facilities now, you know, to say, okay, you know, now you have the facilities, now you just got to go put the team together, and I think bottom line is, with Pontiac, um, it just comes down to is, can the Phoenix, you know what I mean, put everything together, and, you know, and, you know, when you look at the Jefferson hire, it makes it makes some sense. You know what I mean? Is Jefferson ready for, you know, to get this program back on the right track? There's a lot of things when you look at Pontiac, Um, you know, when you figure out, okay, the Phoenix are a team that, you know, hasn't had the type of success that they've had in years past. So Jefferson's challenge for sure is going to be, is changing the mindset, changing the culture. Um, of Pontiac football. Um, and I think that's going to be the first step. Obviously, when you look at building coaching transitions and all that, I think it's going to be a difficult one for them because, you know, you look at Pontiac football, it's not been stable. Um, it hasn't really been stable. And, you know, and, you know, and that's not the kid's fault. You know what I mean? You know, when you change different styles of coaching, um, it's interesting to say the least with Pontiac, um, the direction where the program is at, um, you know, the struggling, you know, when you, when you lose games, a lot of kids aren't going to come out and play football. I mean, so it's important for Jefferson to say, okay, you know, what am I going to, how am I going to get these kids to believe in my system? How am I going to get them to play football? And especially for a program that's been five and ninety-one since two thousand and eleven, um, 
it's going to be a tall task. I mean, like, obviously for what he's got ahead of him. Um, you know, when you look at returning players for Pontiac, obviously you got everything starts and ends with the quarterback. They do return him a quarterback in Kanye Donaldson. Um, I think Donaldson, you know, I think he's due for a big year. I mean, Kanye Donaldson's a solid player, um, a solid talent. Um, no doubt. I, I think Pontiac, you know, obviously with the talent that he's got, um, he's got good arm strength. Um, so that's something to really look for. Also got Davion Halt running back. Um, we know how athletic and how um how athletic he is. I mean, Davian Hall is a really talented player. Um, of course, you know, he had a big year his freshman year. Um, I still remember what he did against Stockbridge a couple of years ago when he went off in that game. Um, I think he exploded for five touchdowns despite the loss to Stockbridge. I mean, like, but Pontiac football, you know, and then of course they have other players like um Devon Johnson, who's a defensive back and secondary, of course. Um, you know, I expect him also to play some wide receiver as well this year for Pontiac. Um, and then, of course, they also have um, Lyman, Bryce, and Lyman Bryce Brown, of course, plays both sides of the aisle, both sides of the offensive line, defensive line. Um, as mentioned with Jefferson, the question is going to come down to is can Pontiac build the depth? Can they build the, um, the experience? I mean, like, can they build program strength? I mean, I know that's been the big problem for Pontiac. Um, and when you look at their division for football this year, they're in Division Three. Um, you know, and, the, and of course, you know, when you look at it, of course, they're also a Class A school as well. So, you know, so there's a lot of things, you know, there are kids in the district over at Pontiac that can really help them. You know, the question is, is can they get those kids to come out? Can they get those kids to, you know, believe in, what they're doing. Can they get their, the kids to believe in what everything's been going on? I mean, like, obviously that's going to be the challenge for um, Wendell Jefferson. Um, also, you know, for Pontiac, it's, you got to know the youth levels. I mean, like, obviously when you look at the youth programs in Pontiac, um, they're there, you know, but when you look at, of course, the challenge for Jefferson, obviously is going to be is keeping the kids in Pontiac. Of course, you notice, you know, a lot of Pontiac kids, they go, they leave the, they leave the area, they go to West Bloomfield. I notice a lot of them are Waterford at Waterford Mott. Um, you know, especially when they go down south, I mean, like, um, you know, especially in those areas, you know, you, you look at those type of kids, the majority of them, you know, some of them are from Pontiac. Um, so that's a challenge I see for Jefferson going forward is can he build that foundation at Pontiac. Can he, you know, is he, can he be there long term? I mean, like, you know, even though you look at, of course, the struggles that this team has had, I mean, like, you look at, of course, the routes that they've had to go through. I mean, like, it's, it's it, I, 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 it, it took its toll. It took its toll. And, you know, they have great kids over there, Pontiac. It's just when you look at the results, you know what I mean? Five and ninety one, you know, I don't I mean like you look at that schedule coming up, it looks manageable for them. Um they're in a they're in the gold, obviously, when you look at the division they're in. I mean, like, you're gonna have a tough schedule regardless when you're playing against teams like Avondale, Ferndale, Berkeley. Um, you know, those three teams I think are gonna be are gonna are gonna be solid this year. I mean, Royal Oak Royal Oak's a big time question mark this year. Um you know, I've got a lot to say about them, um, you know, when you look at the Ravens. Um, but for Pontiac, it's just building competence and building the team, you know what I mean? Getting them to believe in one another. I know a lot of people are sick and tired of rebuilds. And for Pontiac, they've been down for so long. Um, you know, they've been down for so long. And, you know, people, you know, you know, and of course, you know, everything that's happened to them, you know, you look at what's the downturn economically, the loss of enrollment with kids over there. I mean, like, you know, and then just, just everything that's been on over there. Um, I think with Jefferson, you know, he's going to try to bring Pontiac back um, to where they've been. And 
that's going to be a big time challenge for them going forward. And I, I think bottom line is for Pontiac, um, you know, they've got to start winning games. I mean, they've got to start winning games. I mean, like you can't if you can't have any more moral victories or any close victories because you know, or close losses, you know what I mean? There's more victories. Bottom line is, in my opinion, Pontiac's got to win games. I mean, that's really where I think that's that's where the issue that um I have is, can this team get over the hump? I mean, I thought last year, some of those games I thought looked very winnable. They lost some really tough games. Um, but for Pontiac, if they can win at least two or three games this year, it could start turning the corner, and I think that's a good start for Pontiac. Um, you know, if they can start building that foundation, building that core. I mean, there's great, there's talent in Pontiac, obviously. I mean, there's great athletes there in Pontiac. It's just putting everything together. I mean, that's going to be the key for the Phoenix this year is can they put everything together? I mean, like, I I read an article today in the Detroit Free Press um, about you know, with Detroit sports, you look at a course in Metro Detroit, you look at the Red Wings, you look at the Tigers, you look at the Pistons, they're all going through rebuilds right now. And I know a lot of patience have been wearing thin with those sports teams. Um, with Pontiac, you know, they've been down for so long. I don't know the tolerance level over there at Pontiac, but, you know, they want, they thrive to see a winner. I mean, Pontiac's a great sports town. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, they want to see their high school team succeed. Um, but the key is is keeping all the talent at Pontiac, making sure that, um, you know, keeping them all together, you know. And I think that's going to be the key for Coach Wendell Jefferson is can he keep that talent together in Pontiac? Because if, because if they do, I think Pontiac could be in line maybe to make some noise um, going forward. So that's the big challenge I see for Coach Wendell Jefferson. Um, with Pontiac, it's just, it's just keeping that core group together, um, keeping everything in line, um, you know, trying to make the next step, um, winning, winning some games, obviously, and then winning some league games, obviously, you know, when I look at that league in the goal this year, it is a very tough schedule for them, obviously, when you're going against the likes of Abedale, um, Berkeley, um, you know, Royal Oak. I mean, like, you know, it's going to be, it'll be interesting to see how, um, and Ferndale, it'll be interesting to see how Pontiac does this upcoming season um, when you look at it. So the Jefferson hire, I'm curious to see how this will work. Um, I think there's a lot of work to be done with them. Um, but bottom line is, with Pontiac is, they got to start winning some games. I mean, that's clearly, you know, they've got to start winning some games. If they don't, you know what I mean? then this long losing streak could continue. And, you know, and a lot of people are, I mean, when you look at the stats, it, it, it is really ugly when you look at the stats. I mean, the stats were better last year. Don't get me wrong, but they were still very ugly. But not like in years past. But but bottom line is for Pontiac is they got to start putting some wins together. I mean, you know, I mean, like, you know, when you look at the talent they have there, um, bottom line is, you know, I know they got to be coached up. They got to be taught. Um, bottom line is, if you can do that, I think you can be very successful. And I think, and I see that with Pontiac going forward, is can they, is Ken Jefferson be the guy that says, you know what, we're going to turn this around and, you know, don't feel sorry for us. You know what I mean? You know, I mean, like, that's the mindset approach they got to use with Pontiac because they, they got, I mean, like the last few years, it has been very rough, been very chaotic. And bottom line is, you know, you look at Pontiac going forward, you know, the question for me is, you know, there has to be some upside for this team going forward. There has to be, because if there's not, then there's going to be a lot, then, then trouble could be brewing. So be curious to see how Wendell Jefferson does at Pontiac. Very curious to see how things go for them. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward with Pontiac. So other than that, you know what I mean? It's going to be a very challenging, um, be very challenging for Jefferson this season to see if he can turn things around. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how this goes over at Pontiac. So 
be very interested to see what happens there. All right, now let's go from Pontiac. Um, we have another new coach um, over at Avondale now. Um, Avondale named Bob Myers, our new head coach. Um, he takes over for for Corey Bell, who is now at um, who is now the quarterbacks coach at Oxford. Um, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of Avondale Oxford talk today on this pod for sure. Um, of course. Um, but when you look at Bob Meyer, you know, obviously you gotta look at of course. Um, he's been a proven winner wherever he's been, whether it's been at Walled Lake Central or at Livonia Clarenceville. Um, Meyer, of course, has had a, I mean, last few years he's been at Livonia Clarenceville. Of course, he had a really good year. Um, you know, I mean, last three years he's been twenty five and fourteen. Um, he he was twenty five and twenty three in his four years at Livonia Clarenceville, uh, but the last three years twenty five and fourteen. So that kind of tells you something where, you know, that the um that the Trojans were in. Um, Livonia Clarenceville was in. Um, but Meyer brings a very unique offense to Avondale, of course. Um. Avondale, of course, um, one of the most talented teams in this, in Division Three. Of course, they had they run a very they run a Veer offense, which is a very tough offense. Bob Meyer loves to run the Veer offense, and we know what the Veer can do. I mean, now it's not Adams like it's not like Seaholm with their Veers. I mean, their Veers are much different with what Avondale runs. Of course, Avondale, we know. You know, a couple of years ago, I mean, under, um, you know, they ran the spread. They've ran the wing T. Um, but I think running a Veer will be a very interesting offense. But Meyer can also change and adapt as well. I mean, like, they can also run a spread look as well. Um, which certainly what helps is, you know, with Avondale is when you have a proven quarterback and Avondale has a proven quarterback this year, I'm curious to see how his offense is going to mesh with, of course, um, Tyler Herzog. Um, Herzog, Herzog last year had a really nice year for Avondale. I mean, like he had, um, you know, so I'm curious to see how Meyer does with this program. Of course, a, a team that's made the postseason seven of the last eight years, I mean, six of the last seven years, um, you know, they're looking to make it seven of eight, which I think they got a good chance to do it this year considering the schedule they play this year. I mean, Avondale's got some, you know, they're going to be very interesting to watch because when you look at the Yellow Jackets, um, you know, they got talent. They got proven playmakers. You have proven options. My biggest concern with Avondale is always going to be program strength because historically, this is not a deep team. This is not a deep program. But I give, of course, you know, Steve, Coach Steve Deutsch a lot of credit. I give Coach Ed Kateri a lot of credit. I also give um, Coach Corey Bell a lot of credit because they've managed to keep Avondale very competitive each year. They built the program. Um, the only knack on Avondale has always been they haven't been able to get out of the first round since 2012. And albeit the last two years, they've had to play Birmingham Brother Rice, which is a brutal matchup for Avondale. You know, considering, you know, you look at Birmingham Brother Rice, you know, their history, obviously they recruit kids, um, you know, and then playing in that Catholic League Central every year, that's very difficult. Um, for Avondale, it's very difficult. You know, when you play in the gold um, and then having to play Birmingham Brother Rice in the first round, that's very difficult um, in its own right. So, and then, of course, they ran into, um, they lost the Groves a couple years ago, and then they lost to Holly in a crazy shootout. Um, it was a couple years ago they lost that game. Um, so, when you look at, when you look at what Meyer brings, I mean, Meyer's going to bring a lot of experience. I mean, he brings a lot of experience to this team. And they have enough experience already. When you look at players like, um, we mentioned Herzog earlier. You got Justin Greer Sykes. Um, you got Afonso Merritt at, in the secondary. You got Cooper Volfrey at wide receiver as well. You got proven linemen in um, 
you know, Charlie Killian, Dariel Chikar, Cameron Washington. Your defense should be solid with Miles Moore and Matthew Lloyd coming back. Defense is secondary besides Merritt is a, is a big-time question mark for Avondale. Um, and this work comes down to depth. And I think depth is a big-time question mark for Avondale as we look at the Yellow Jackets. Um, and I think that's going to be a challenge for Meyer going forward. Now, what helps Meyer is that he was at Laboni Clarenceville. And we know, you know, the talent pool down there in Livonia. Um, there is some talent, but I think the talent in Auburn Hills is a little bit more better. Um, considering, you know, you look at, of course, Avondale, of course, we know the, um, youth football program there. They got the, um, they got, of course, middle school football over at Avondale. Of course, they play on the same field over there at Avondale Middle School there. Um, so there is a feeder system there for football. So, bottom, so. You know, when you look at, of course, the hire um, of Meyer, I mean, people are, you know, we're going to talk about the hire in a minute here, but, you know, but I, I think for Meyer, he's walking into a very great situation here with Avondale. Um, taking over a team with a lot of experience, taking over a team with a lot of proven talent. Um, I think Avondale, when I look at the hire and I look at the division they're in, they're in the gold. Um, Obviously, Meyer knows Berkeley because Berkeley and Livonia Clarence will played each other a couple of years ago. I still remember that game. And that was a big win at the time for Coach Sean Shields when they knocked off um, Livonia Clarence over in Livonia. That was a big win for them at the time. Um, so he does know Berkeley very well. Um, and then you look at, of course, you have Ferndale. Of course, Ferndale, we know what. They're the, the, they're the defending gold champs from last year. They're a postseason team. They're going to be a little bit younger this year. Um, so with Ferndale, it'll be very interesting to see how that how that how they go. Pontiac, we already talked about them earlier. Um, a team that's trying to find itself. Um, I think they're going to be okay next year. I really do. I think they're going to be okay this year. I, I just think bottom line is, can Pontiac find a way to, you know, you know win some games. I mean, that's the big time question there for them. Um, when you look at them and then there's Royal Oak. I mean, when you look at Royal Oak, it's kind of hard for me to figure them out because as I mentioned earlier <laughs> with Royal Oak, the big question I have for them is, is can they turn the corner? Can they turn it around? <laughs> because Royal Oak in football has been just, you know, and then they went with them, Colin Campbell's their head coach. So, and I've already mentioned Campbell on, on air numerous times. I think he's got a lot to prove because when he was the interim coach at Royal Oak, that team was 0-3 and didn't score a point. So now he takes over the, takes over the, the gig full time. I'm very curious to see if any changes he made to the program and how are they going to work? Because when I look at Royal Oak football, you know, to me, they could be in some trouble this year. I think Royal Oak could be in some, in some trouble this year, maybe even more than Pontiac. Because when I look at Royal Oak, I mean, there's some question marks with that team. A ton of them. I mean, they got to replace quarterback. They got to get it. In their running games, question mark. I mean, they got a solid receiving game. Their line is okay. I mean, like, but there's a lot of questions Royal Oak. So when I look at Avondale's case, there should be no reason why this team shouldn't win the gold this year. There's no reason why this team should be able, shouldn't be able to win the gold. Because with the talent they have back, with the proven experience they have back, I mean, and now you bring in a proven winner in Coach Bob Meyer. You know, there's no reason why this team shouldn't win the division. There's no reason. I mean, this team should be the favorite. Abno should be the favorite to win the gold this year. I mean, now you had a proven coach in Coach Meyer. I mean, I mean, you know what to expect with Avondale. I mean, if you're an Avondale fan. You got to love this hire. 
you got to really love this hire. Because <laughs> Meyer demands accountability. You look at what he's done at Laboni Clarenceville. You look at what he's done at Wild Lake Central. I mean, I mean, he's he's a proven winner. He really is. So when you look at when you look at it with Abedale, you know, there's no reason why this team shouldn't win at least maybe six games. At least. And be a playoff team. So when I look at this hire, you know. It tells me, win now. That's what it is. So I'm very curious to see in the lower levels, especially, program strength is my biggest concern with this hire. <laughs> because, obviously in the middle schools, you know, that's where your key players are at. That's where your future is. Do you build a, do you build a freshman program? Do you build a J? I mean, obviously you have a JV program. I mean, there's so much structure and so much question marks, structure questions that Avondale has this season, especially in the lower levels. That is the big question I have with Avondale is the structure questions. Other than that, varsity-wise, this is a very good football team. I think they're a good football team. I mean, in my early top 10, I had them 10. I mean, when I look at Abendale. And I think a lot of that's because of the proven experience. Now you had, a, you had a proven experience coach in Meyer. You know, the expectations now go up a little bit. Um, Obviously, you know, Corey Bell's done a really good job with that team. Last two years, he's did a really good job with that program. He's turned that program into a very good program. I mean, he's got that win last year. I think his best win was last year against North Farmington where, you know, they came they came back in that game and just basically beat North Farmington. That was a big win at the time for them. That got them, I think, into the playoffs was that win over the Raiders. Um, so when I look at Avondale's schedule coming up, I mean, you know, it looks manageable. It really does. So I'm very curious to see what happens with Abigail. So now on the Meyer hire, um, to be honest with you, I really love this hire for several reasons. One, Meyer's an experienced coach. He knows how to win. He knows how to coach players up, especially with this type of team. He's got proven athletes on this team. Justin Greer Sykes is a proven playmaker. He is a very good athlete, very talented athlete. You see it. You know, he's a very good basketball player. He's also a very good football player. I'm not sure if he does track or not, but but I've seen his game in football. I've seen his game in boys basketball. I mean, he looks the part as a very talented athlete. You have Cooper Wolfrey, who's a really good underrated wide receiver. I mean, you got pieces here. You got proven weapons here. Only question I have with Avondale is going to be, how's your rushing attack going to be? I mean, you know, that's the big question is, can you balance it out? I mean, you definitely have the proven playmakers at wide receiver. You have the quarterback in Tyler Herzog. I mean, you. I mean, the question's going to be is, can they be able to find that rushing attack? Can they find that balance? And defensively, they have the linemen. It's just the question's going to be is, do they have enough linemen? You know what I mean? To basically balance it out, develop that depth. Um, you have the linebackers. You definitely have. And then the other question is, who's your other guy in the defensive secondary? Do you put Wolfrey in the secondary? Do you put Greer Sykes in the secondary? Or do you put him um, to, to go alongside Alfonso Mort? That's the big question I have for Coach um, Bob Meyer and his team. Is can they build that depth, especially, you know, in the, in the defensive secondary? That's the big time question I have for Avondale. If they do, I think this could be a very good team. 
And then can they also overcome their postseason slump? Can they win a postseason game for the first time since 2012? That's the big questions I have with Avondale is can they, can they put it together in the postseason? That's the big time question I have for Avondale when you look at the Yellow Jackets is can they put it together? That is the big question mark. And I think that's the challenge that Coach Bob Meyer sees is can they win a playoff game, especially the fact they haven't won a postseason game um, in, about, in about 11 years. So that's the challenge for Avondale is can they find that postseason magic? Can they find it? I think they're a postseason team this year. Don't get me wrong. I think they're a playoff team this year. But can they find it during the postseason? That's the big time question that I see with Coach Bob Meyer and his team going forward. Um, so that's going to be the challenge for Coach Bob Meyer is can they find can they find a way to be um, you know they're I think they're a playoff team for sure, but can they? Find it in the postseason. That's the big time question mark there. Uh, let's go now from football. Let's talk a little bit of girls basketball here. Um, big story here um, is I think this is this is a very interesting story here, um, and that's Nevaeh Wood. Um, Nevaeh Wood, of course, um, played at Oxford this year. Um, tore ACL out for the year. Um, didn't play in the postseason. Um, transfers to Avondale. Um, which is very interesting because you look at, of course, you know, you know, you look at what Wood brings to Avondale and then you got to look at the other side of it with Oxford. Um, so Wood's going to be a yellow jacket next year. Um, of course it's a big loss for Oxford. Um, but when you look at it with Oxford, I mean, like, was, was Nevaeh Wood, one of their most valuable players. Yeah, she's a valuable piece, but is she the heart and soul of that team? That's that's what you got to answer. Now, what she brings to Avondale is obviously a post presence that, you know, that was lacking under Coach Roy Cushman this season. Of course, Avondale last year really struggled. They really struggled in the blue division. Um, Just... You know, with um, they were a young team last year, very young. Now you put her alongside Madison Manyweathers, and you look at Avondale and say, okay, maybe we have some here. I mean, Avondale, I think could be a team that they could surprise some people next year, but they've got a lot of work to do. I mean, they got a lot of work to do. I mean, so when you look at <laughs> What Wood brings, is she their best player? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I would absolutely say so that Nevaeh Wood is going to be their best player. But, you know, you got you got others that can make some noise too. When you look at, um, when you look at obviously Manny Weathers, you look at, of course, um, you know, they got others as well. But when I look at Avondale, I mean, I thought last year they had, they had, I mean, you, you, were, you didn't return mass in many ways. You got Ariel Dugley, Khalil Bradley, and Trinity Carroll all coming back. Um, but when I look at Avondale last year, they were, they started off hot. They won three straight games. They went 4-11 and 11 the rest of the way. They were, actually, they started off 0-5. They were 0-5, then they went three straight, and then they went 4-11 and 11 the rest of the way. Um... End up losing in the first round to um no in the um district semifinals to um Utica Ford. Utica Ford's a very good team. I mean, so when I look at what Wood brings to to um Avondale, she brings she's gonna be their best player. But the question is with her is gonna be is how is the is how is she going to be after the ACL injury? I mean, that is the big question I have with um with Ox with the with Avondale is you know, is how is she going to be? Obviously you look at many weathers, you look at Dougley, um, you know, it, does it make Avondale better? 
Yeah, it does. I mean, like, no doubt. Do I think are they going to be the fair in their division? Um, now, we haven't heard the divisions yet. Um, they're going to be announced in a little bit. They're going to be announced um, in time. But, you know, it, this move does make Avondale better. But then when you look at, of course, you know, when you look at the situation they're in. But then I have a question here for Avondale is, are you getting better playing, you know, the team that you played? I mean, you look at the division you played in this year. You played in the blue. I mean, you played against Oak Park. Oak Park's been um, up and down. I mean, Avondale did lose a game to Ferndale in the regular season. I think Ferndale's better. Um, with the, they've got to play more games. That's obvious. Um, I think Ferndale University is going to be a better team next year. Um, Pontiac, you know, there's nowhere to go but up for them. I mean, they started seventh freshman this year. Um, now they're all going to be sophomores. Um, so, you know, getting a player like a Nevaeh Wood, who's played in the white, he's played against red teams. Um, it's a big, significant get for Coach Roy Krishman. Um, but the big time question is going to be is when you're playing against you know, different type of competition, how are you going to be? That's the big time question I have when you look at a player like Nabea Wood, is how is she going to be? That is the big question mark when I look at Avondale. Um, and now let's look at the other side. Um, there's Oxford here. Um, for Oxford, they lost Wood um, half of the halfway of the year against um, North Farmington. Um... And they were not the same team after that. Um, Oxford did end up winning some big critical games. Um, they ended up beating them. Um, but they, their two losses, I mean, they lost four games. I mean, they lost to um, North Farmington and Lake Orion both twice. Um, so the reason why I say about, you know, for them losing Nevaeh Wood, um, I just think, you know, when you look at, I mean, the, they, didn't, they didn't have Wood half of the year. I mean, they didn't have Nevaeh Wood half of the year. I mean, yes, coming into the year, you know, you look at, of course, Oxford starting five, one of the best in the, um, was supposed to be one of the best in the, um, in the league. Yeah, obviously, you look at Miranda Winemco, you know, she's graduated, but you do have some several key players coming back for this team, and Peyton Richter, Sophia Robb, um, Allison Huffsteller, then you have, um, Lexi Yankee, and then, of course, you have, um, you know, and when you look at, o at Avery Feeney, you look at Oxford, you know, they, you know, they were battle-tested this year. I mean, you look at, of course, their future. They got Emma Breggs coming into the program. Taylor Berdur's another piece I'm high on for Coach Rachel Breyer. There's definitely talent there um, with Oxford next year. There's some talent there. I mean, the question for me is going to be is what divisions Ox are going to be in. Are they going to be in the red? Are they going to be in the white? Um, that's the big time question mark for Oxford is, you know, and then, of course, you know, when you look at Oxford, when you look at valuable pieces, Allison Huffsetter, to me, is Oxford's most valuable piece. And I say this for a few reasons. Number one, she, re she can score whenever she wants to. She's the vocal leader on the floor. She knows, she knows every, she knows, you know, she's like a point guard on the floor, you know. You know, she's playing the um the three slash four spot. I mean, she's a rebounder. She, she's a scorer. I mean, she can get to the line. She's a, she's a shooter. I mean, like, she has everything you can ask for. I mean, she her game kind of reminds me a little bit of Jessica Murphy's. I mean... You know, Jessica Murphy was a very athletic player. Very good player. And don't get me wrong. I think, you know, when you look at comparing and contrasting the two players, um, you know, I think it's I think they're both pretty even players. They're very talented. Both of them are very talented. And I think Allison Hubsetter is the key to Oxford's season next year. People look at, okay, is it Sophia Robb? Is it... um. Peyton Richter, I think Hofstetter's the key because, you know, honestly, honestly, when you look at Oxford, you know, obviously, you know, she is the glue to the Wildcats season. 
I think she's going to be the most valuable part of Oxford season. I mean, no matter what division they're in, I, I just think bottom line is for Coach Rachel Fryer, Allison Hofstetter's the key. Because, you know, if she gets hurt, I think they're in trouble. Um, That's really what I think. Now, Wood did some really good things at Oxford. I mean, she's, she's a solid rebounder. Um, she she played her part very well over there. I mean, like, very productive player over there at Oxford. She was a very productive player. And I expect her to be the same over at Avondale because of, I, I think, I think that, um, I think, you know, being very productive, but I think she's going to do more over there at Avondale. Um, but I'm curious to see if, you know, how she does next year, you know, I mean, like, that's the big question mark I have for that, for, for Avondale. And on Oxford's side, on Oxford's side, I think they're going to be okay. I, I just think they're going to be okay. Um, program strength has been solid there at Oxford. Their freshman team was solid. Their JV team went 18-2 and two, um, this past season. Um, if they go up to the red, it could, be a, it could be a daunting task for them. If they do go up to the red, have them deal with teams like West Bloomfield, um, Clarkston, Stony Creek, Lake Orion. Um, you know, those type of teams are going to be, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be some challenges to Oxford next year. Um, I mean, obviously your sophomore class is very good. Um, and I think Oxford sophomore class is very good. I'm going to be sophomore class. is going to be very good next year. Um, so there's a lot to like if you're coach Rachel Breyer and the Wildcats. Um, just, I think, I think they're going to be fine. I mean, you know, you lose two very good players. You lose Miranda when that comes to graduation. Yeah, it's going to be a big loss. Then you lose Nevaeh Wood, who transfers out. Um, but if I was, Ray, if I'm Coach Rachel, if I had to say something to Coach Rachel Breyer, I will just say, you know what? Relax. You're fine. You're going to be okay. You know? That's what I would say with Oxford. You know what I mean? Is You still got Huff Settler. You still have Rob. You still have Richter. I mean, you got experience. That helps you. You got proven experience, which helps you. And then you have players like A.B. Feeney and Lexi Yankee. Of course, they bring you depth. They bring you experience. They bring you hard work. Then you have Emma Beggs who's coming up. I mean, like, like going to be up on varsity. She's a three-point shooter. You have players like Tegan O'Connor. I mean, like, you look at what she's been doing. You look at, um, you know, her freshman year. She had a really nice year. Um, there. She's also Oxford's top, one of their um, top girl shot putters and discus girls this year. Um, going with her and Elizabeth Wright this year in, in, the, in, the, in the throws area over at Oxford. Um, but I'll tell you what, Tegan O'Connor is a very good basketball player. I mean, don't get me wrong. She's a very talented player. Um, so when I look at Oxford, there is talent in that program. There is talent there. You know, so when I look at Oxford, you know, they're going to be fine. I wouldn't press the panic button on this team. I mean, like, especially when you lose two very good capable players like they did. I mean, with Miranda Winemco and um, Peyton Rick. I mean, with Miranda Winemco and, um, you know, now you have Nevaeh Wood. I mean, they're going to be fine. I mean, I, I wouldn't press the panic button there. So when I look at the situation there, obviously Wood going to Avondale, I think it's going to help Avondale a lot. Because it gives them a post presence there, um, it gives them a proven ex player with a lot of with experience playing against some higher competition, playing against the red, playing against the white. Um, I think it's going to help them big time against teams like them. Um, but I'm the only downside of this is with Wood going to Avondale is what you worry about the competition that she's playing against. Um, you know, and then, of course, when you look at the postseason, you don't know where they're going to put Avondale at come postseason time. Um, do they put them in a district like like what happened in this year when they had a district with Troy Athens, Utica, Utica Ford? Um, you know, do they do that? I mean, that's the big time question mark over there um, when you look at Avondale. Um, is, you know, obviously at Madison Manyweather, that is a big, I mean, she's going to be a very solid player. Ariel Dougley's another one. 
Um, so there is some talent over there at Avondale. It's just Nevaeh Wood is a big, big piece to the puzzle over there. Um, I think she's going to be a big, I think she might be in for a big year over there at Avondale. Um, going forward. Now the question is, how does she recover from the ACL injury? Um, that remains to be seen. Um, so a lot of question marks when you look at Nevaeh Wood. I mean, like, obviously that is the, um, big time story here, um, is what happened over at, um, with, between both Avondale and Oxford, the impact of both these two teams, how that's going to be. Um, so that's something to really keep an eye on there. Um, also, we got some breaking news a little bit for boys basketball over at Oxford. Um, been hearing a lot of rumblings about Steve Laidlaw, um, uh, over at Oxford. Um, haven't posted it yet, but according to, um, a couple sources, um, it looks like he is stepping down at Oxford. Um, and, you know, it's, he's had a really good career at Oxford. Really great career. Um, when you really look at what, um, you know, what, um, coach Laidlaw has done, he's, he's been at Oxford through and through. I mean, like he's been through the ups, he's been through the downs. Um, and you know, when I look at Oxford, when I look at Oxford, of course, I, I, you won't, when you think Oxford basketball, boys basketball, you always think of playing against coach Steve Laidlaw because one, he's an honorable coach. Honorable man. Proven winner. You obviously, people look at Oxford, of course, he's been there for two stints. I mean, you know, of course, and then, of course, obviously what, the 2018-2019 the season at Oxford, nobody's going to ever forget that season at Oxford. Um, when he led the Wildcats to a 19-1 record, um, then he lead him to a district championship. Of course, the... Um, winning against Lake Orion in the district final and their home gym. Um, and then, of course, you know, and then, of course, getting the regional final, following the Howell in the district final, in the regional final. Um, you know, and then, of course, um, you look at the players he's coached, um, players like Billy Keenis, who's now coaching at Holly. Um, he coaches football at Holly. Um, you look at, um, of course, you look at Trey Townsend, who's playing at Oakland University now. Um, you know, he's coached, um, Michael Raish, who's been a really good player. Um, you know, you look at, of course, and then of course you look at the team he had this year. You look at Jake Champagne, Dominic Cassisi, um, Drew Katie, Jay Katie, um, Luke Stofan. I mean, you know, I mean, he's done an awesome job with this program. He has done just an awesome job awesome job with the Oxford Wildcats program. Um, really, um, I mean, really, you know, I mean, like he's been through the ups, been through the downs. I mean, like, you know, and bottom line is, you know, he's, he's a remarkable man, you know, and I give him nothing but the best of respect. You know what I mean? You know, you know, part of the um, coaching at Oxford, um, being there for the kids. Um, you know, you can't say enough about what Coach Steve Laidlaw has done for the community of Oxford. He was there with them. Um, when you look at Oxford, to me, in my opinion, Steve Laidlaw is Oxford basketball. And you know, for him, you know, you know, I mean, like, he had a great year. He he's had a great career coaching at Oxford. He's had a great career. Um, so when you look at the future of Oxford basketball, I mean, a lot of questions when you look at the Wildcats. I mean, obviously it starts, you know what I mean? I'm curious to see who, what the direction that Oxford goes. Um, they do return Cassisi. They do have Champagne. You have Stolfin. You have both Katie brothers. Um, Oxford should be a better team this year. But I'm curious to see who coaches them. You know, obviously people look at, of course, there are some proven names there. Um, Joe Frederick um, is one of the guys mentioned. Um, I think would be interest would be a good fit for them. I mean, I think it'd be a great fit for Oxford. Um, 
you know, of course, he was his assistant under Coach Steve Laidlaw. Do they go out to Billy Keenest? Um, of course, Keenest played at Oxford, but I know he coaches football at Holly. Um, you know, just a lot of, lot of, or, or this Oxford um, electric Tony, um, Tony DeMore, does he go a different direction? I mean, there's a lot of questions with Oxford going forward. You know, the direction of the program, where it goes. I mean, there's a lot of questions. So we'll see. I mean, it'll be very interesting to see how um how um you know Oxford goes this offseason, of course. Um just big shock, you know what I mean? Really it was a big shock. Um I haven't posted the blog yet, but I probably will later tonight. So that's something to really keep an eye on. Um but you know, with Oxford, give credit where credit's due. I mean, like, um, you know, Coach Laidlaw has had a great career. I'm um, coaching the Wildcats. Um, you know, so it'd be something to really keep an eye on for sure. Um, going forward there is, is what happens over at Oxford. Um, going forward there. Um, let's go to some spring sports, obviously. When you look at spring sports, um, you know, when you look at softball, obviously, um, the big story. Um, it's interesting in softball. I think Lake Orion really took a big step this week. Um, I still think Clarkson's solid. I still think Adams is the team to beat. Um, North Farmington, you know, they've been up and down. Um, you know, Ferndale's another team. I'm curious to see how they do. Um, so we'll see how that goes in softball, but some big strides here in the range of softball. Baseball, um, Adams, you got West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield, I think I've been really impressed with West Bloomfield more and more when I hear about them. Um, Lake Orion's a team to, to be a reckon with there, too. I mean, Clarkson's, Oxford are solid. Troy, Athens, Troy, um, Avidale. I mean, and then, of course, you know, so I'm very curious to see how that goes in baseball. Um, they released the, I know in my prep zone released their golf previews, um, Adams, Clarkson, Lake Orion are mentioned in that. Um, so very interesting to see. And then of course there's girls soccer. Obviously when you look at, of course, the kiss of death this year, I mean the kiss of death, um, league, which is the red, obviously when you look at, you know, you look at teams like, um, Adams, Rochester and Stony Creek, um, and Troy Athens. That's not an easy gauntlet night in, night out. That's that's a really tough league. I still think Rochester is the best of those teams right now. But even though I think Troy, I think I think Stony Creek might have a case, considering they had a big four out to win against Troy Athens the other night. Um the White, I think, you know, you got Seaholm there. I think Lake Orion's a team to really watch for in that division. Um so it's it's really interesting to see. What happens there? I mean, I'm curious to see how, um, you know, how girls soccer is going to go. Obviously, when you look at the top teams, I mean, the blue, I still think West Bloomfield and Avondale, even though they played already. And I think West Bloomfield did beat Avondale. Um, so, you know, that's my take on girls soccer is I still think Rochester is the best team right now in girls soccer out of that whole group. But... When it goes forward, we'll see what happens. Um, track and field, boys' side, I still think Adams, you know, obviously with the talent they have back. Oak Park's another one. Um, on the boys' side of things, Farmington obviously is a team to beat with the talent they got. Um, and then on the girls' side, you got obviously Oak Park. We know how good they are. Um, Royal Oak, I think very deep when it comes to depth. Um, they're a very talented team. Yeah, they don't have the star quality players like Oak Park does, even though they have Ellie Finch, who is a, um, a very good thrower. I mean, like, you know, very good shot putter, very good discus girl. Um, not sure she committed anywhere yet. Really, I'm not. Um, so, it'll be very interesting there. Um, Bloopy Hills is always solid. Um, and then of course you still have Oak Park. You have Oxford. Oxford is ranked in the state right now, obviously. So really, 
that's something to really look for going forward there. Um, girls Lacrosse, um, I still think it's Birmingham United and Bloomfield Hills. I mean, Lake Orion's another team to watch. Stony Creek's been playing pretty good volleyball, too. Pretty good with girls lacrosse, too. Um, you know, so I think that's something to really watch for there. Boys lacrosse, it's Clarkston, Lake Orion. Um, those are the two teams to really watch for in the OAA. Um, Birmingham United is another one. Um, Stony Creek has been playing pretty well right now. I'm curious to see how they would do against the likes of Lake Orion and Clarkston. Um, they did get a win against Adams. It was a big deal there. Um, they did also, they haven't played Birmingham United yet. So that's something to really, really watch for as we, um, move forward. So we've had a lot to talk about this week here on the pod. Of course, um, you know, we've had, I mean, obviously, um, We've talked a lot, a lot of sports this week. Of course, a lot of breaking news, obviously. Um, make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com um, for the latest information, obviously, with everything going on around the OAA. Um, a lot of news occurring this past week. Um, so really a lot to look at as we head into the season. Um, a lot of things breaking down. So we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Of course, um, got Between Terminus coming back. We got Last Three Brain Cells coming back. I mean, really looking forward to those two shows. Um, so a lot to look forward to. Um, if you want to look at, if you want to talk BT Sports, I mean, like, of course, um, and then, of course, we have Last Three Brain Cells. We're going to be previewing the NFL draft. Um, so a lot to look at. Um, as we look forward, um, heading into the months of April and then heading into May, a lot of excitement around the high school docket. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody. Um, make sure you follow the blog at Saturday at 46 at blogspot.com. So we'll see what happens. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. See you. And God bless you.